Pokemon boxes, auto saves, and nicknames. These are handy features to help you on your adventure throughout Pokemon Sword and Shield. What is up, guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Fred, and today we got some news on all of these features inside of the games. And I thought it was a good idea to just jump through this Pokemon news article on the official Pokemon website, dive in and explain and go over with you guys my thoughts on these features coming into Pokemon Sword and Shield. It says there are many new features in Pokemon Sword and Shield that are designed to make your adventure easier to enjoy. We would like to show you a few examples. Let's jump into the first one, Pokemon Boxes. As we guys know, we know what Pokemon Boxes are, right? Right? Now, let's find out what they are inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield. It says you can deposit Pokemon you do not want in your team in your Pokemon boxes. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, you'll be able to access your Pokemon boxes in various towns and facilities. But also while you're on the road or even while you're exploring tall grass, you're able to swap Pokemon into and out of your team whenever you want. So try experimenting with all sorts of different Pokemon. So this is kind of what we've seen in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee where at any time in the game, you can switch any Pokemon that's in your box or on your team, in your party, and just switch it up. It was kind of weird and kind of a quote-unquote easy mode if you abused it. However, it does say just be aware that there are a few places, such as the mission areas, where you can take on Pokemon gyms where you won't be able to access your boxes. So inside of gyms, you're not allowed to do this pretty sure inside of like the Elite Four and stuff during main battle events, quote unquote, inside of the stadiums and stuff like that. You're not going to be able to access your boxes. Obviously that will make the gyms and stuff like that a walk in the park. So I'm glad that they are saying, yo, you could do this when you're in a wild area, when you, you know, just grinding and you, you want to switch out your Pokemon. You don't have to make it all the way back to a Pokemon Center. You could switch out. I like that idea. But I also like the idea of saying, yo, with gems, we're going to treat them like gems. You, you better come in with the Pokemon you want. If you have Pokemon in your boxes that you want, you can't switch them out. I like that idea. I like that. I like that. It's balanced. You know what I'm saying? It's, show, it's giving the people who want easy mode on easy, you know, abusing the system. Yeah, you could do it. But then when you enter gyms, you gotta treat it like a gym, like the classic games. I like that. I like the, I like the options. Give everybody options. We got some screenshots here showing boxes on how they work. Every, if you play the Pokemon game ever, you know how boxes work. You grab a Pokemon, you throw them in the, in your party, you take a Pokemon from your party, you throw them in the box. You don't need, you know, it's not rocket science, it's science. Moving on to the next feature, autosave. Saving diligently has always been a part of a Pokemon adventure, but now there's an auto Auto save functionality to help you out. The auto save functionality will automatically save your progress during your adventure at various points, such as when you enter a town or a building. This functionality is automatically turned on when you begin your adventure, but you'll be able to turn it off if you want to have more control over when your progress is saved. Again, the functionality is turned on when you begin your adventure. If you want to turn it off, go in the option menu and turn the bitch off. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't have to play with auto saves on if it's an issue for you. However, just do know when you turn on the game, it's going to be on. Just go in the options and turn it off, all right? Because I know I'm going to play with it off. I'm just, I'm an OG. I got to press start and save three times before I do anything. That's that's just how I play Pokemon. It's going to be weird for me to, to know in my brain that it's auto-saving and trust in auto-save, especially when it comes to, you know, soft resetting and stuff like that, which I'm going to get into in a different video, but I probably do it off. It says, even with auto-save on, you still be able to save manually too, just as you can with auto-save off. Go into the options menu and choose how you like to save. So you can set up the experience that suits your style. A message will appear in the upper right-hand corner 
of the screen when your progress is being automatically saved. It's kind of weird talking about autosave as a quote unquote feature in a 2019 game release. However, this is the first time we're seeing auto saves inside of a Pokemon game. So that's why it's kind of important to actually discuss it and go over it. I know there was a lot of people on Twitter that I have seen who were playing Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee who haven't played a Pokemon game in a while who, you know, lost three hours worth of progress because they thought the game was auto-saving all the time and that wasn't the case. They were just tapping off the off button, sending their Nintendo Switch to sleep. And then when they happened to jump out the game, they noticed they lost all their progress because again, they weren't saving the game. So again, don't let it happen to you click the auto save on and off in the beginning of your playthrough and choose your style of, of how you're going to do it. I know I'm going to play with it off just so I can be control of when the game actually saves. Again, that's just me because I want to capture certain footage of certain dialogues and stuff like that of, of my gameplay, you know, to do videos and walkthroughs and stuff like that. I'm just, you know, I, I need it off. <laughs> Nicknames. If a Pokemon you receive in a trade doesn't have a nickname, you now have a chance to give it a nickname, but only once. That is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting to, to that was going to be a feature. That's cool. So if you wonder trade or surprise trade a Pokemon and you get a Wulu and you want to name your Wulu Boo Boo, you can do that. You don't have to be stuck with a name because of the fact that it came from a trade. That is pretty cool. So speak to the man standing behind the left hand corner of any Galar region Pokemon Center. This jack of all trades is sure to help you out. So again, in the corner of any Galar Pokemon Center, the left-hand corner, there's a man standing there. He's going to help you out with your nicknames. It says, note that just in previous titles, you won't be able to change the name of a traded Pokemon that already has a nickname. Unfortunately, if a Pokemon comes over with a trash nickname like Chicago Bulls, you cannot change the name, no matter what it is. You can't change, which is unfortunate. I wish we could, but the fact that they're letting us change the name if the, they never had a nickname before it, and to give them a nickname, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a step in the right direction, if you ask me. I kind of wish they just opened it up and be like, hey, Regardless of the name, you could change it. It's yours. You, you could change it, but they, they want to keep some originality to it, which I could understand. But let me know how you feel about these brand new features in the comment section below about Pokemon boxes being able to just jump in, jump out of the Pokemon box anywhere. Do you think it makes the games too easy? What about your thoughts of not being able to use them inside of gyms and stadiums and stuff like that? Do you think that's a cool idea, a bad idea? Let's talk about it. Also, autosave feature. How are you going to be playing Pokemon Sword and Shield with autosave off or autosave on? And the nicknames. Are you a type to give your Pokemon nicknames? I definitely am. I usually do it on my first playthrough, give every Pokemon a nickname because I'm just crazy like that. And then my second playthrough, I do not. But nicknames is definitely important for me because every playthrough, again, of a first new generation, I always did that. I always gave my Pokemon nicknames. It's just something I it's just something I do. Like this time around, I'm gonna play Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm gonna pick Score Bunny and I'm gonna name that bitch Fire Buzz or Buzz Like Gear or you know Bugs Bunny. Something to that nature. I haven't thought about it yet, but it's gonna be something like that. Let me know if you're a nickname guy or are you not. It doesn't matter to you. Let me know in the comment section below. As you guys know, I answer all comments, so let's chat it up down there. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. I do videos like this every day talking about Pokemon. And with the games releasing next week, best believe I'm going to have tons of guides and coverage and whatever about these brand new Pokemon games so you don't want to miss it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It does help me out a ton. 
one as far as moving the video over to recommended so other people can enjoy the video as well. Peace. I love you guys. I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.